we're going to continue talking about the, the prayer that Jesus had prayed uh, when he was there with Lazarus and, had, and when Lazarus was risen from the grave. And last time, uh, so the, the scripture there was John 11, uh, verses 41 and 42. So the entire scripture there, uh, I'm going to read that, and then we'll do, do a summary uh, of some from last week and get into this week's lesson. So uh, John 11:41 says, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. So from that prayer, uh, we end up having, whenever we examine that, uh, there are three things for us to consider. One is the situation of the prayer, which we spoke about last week. Uh, tonight, we'll talk about the specifics of the prayer. And then we'll talk about the sequel of the prayer, uh, possibly next week. So uh, the situation of the prayer we talked about within disease and sickness, that it doesn't matter uh, who we are, that disease and sickness can come our way. That just because that we follow Christ doesn't mean that it, it's always going to stay away from us. That we can have uh, sickness uh, impact our lives. We also talk, learned about the sorrow during death. And we saw how Jesus had saw uh, Martha weeping. Uh, we saw how uh, he saw the Jews nearby weeping. And we saw uh, how Jesus wept himself. And then we also looked at those who were skeptics, those who doubted. Even Martha had doubted what Jesus was able to do because we even hear him, hear her say, the Lord, by this time, he stinketh. So she believed that he was dead, which is true, he was, and, but that the Lord would not be able to do anything for him at this point. Even his disciples, before they got there, had skepticism of why they were even going. And then we learn about the people of Bethany who were there and how they were skeptics of what would end up happening. So we, we read about these things uh, that are going on. But tonight, as part two, we want to look at some of the specifics of the prayer. Uh, we want to note how this was a marvelous prayer uh, that Christ had prayed, and he was here in the cemetery. Uh, we end up noting that there are eight specific things that he ha had in this prayer. Now. Um, cover these quickly, uh, but there were seven things uh, There were, I guess there are eight specific things about the prayer, but we're going to look at seven of those things uh, tonight. We're going to look at how, G how, how Christ had prayed continuously, it was briefly, spontaneously, unashamed, believingly, grateful, knowingly, and beneficial. So these are uh, seven things that we can learn for ourselves that we can take into account in our prayer life and how we we can uh, pray in order in a way that would uh, glorify God. So uh, the first one to look at is he prayed continuously. And we look at the first uh, part of this, or actually when we look back to John 11, 4, uh, a little earlier here, it says, Jesus had said, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. So it's probably John eleven forty one. So uh, he ends up saying that he thanks, he thanked the Lord for hearing him, or that he had already heard him. So if he's saying something that has happened in the past, that means that he's already done it. So that means he's already prayed, and he's asked the Lord to, to be glorified through all of this. You know, that is such a great lesson for each one of us. You know, we can thank the Lord for what he's going to do before he does it. You know, we can thank him in faith. We can ha have believing faith and know that, you know, when we have that uh, loved one that, that is lost and we're praying for them, or we have that, that person we're praying for that has not been healed yet of that sickness or disease, that we can pray for them ahead of time. And through that prayer, we can ask the Lord to, to heal them, but we can also thank him ahead of the time that we can go ahead and thank him and say, Lord, I believe that you're going to do this, and I'm going to thank you for doing that. And we can see that Christ was in continual prayer through this. 
uh, that was there. So the, the next item there that we want to look at is how he prayed briefly. He says, I thank thee, so this is 41 and 42 we're going to read, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. So we can see that this is not a very long prayer. And there's only about three dozen words or so that's here that he had prayed. This was a public prayer that Jesus had prayed. It was in front of other people. And partly because of being in front of a lot of other people, he was fairly brief in his prayer uh, instead of having a long, drawn-out prayer. And, and that's one thing that we want to consider is that a lot of times, you know, we want to consider what we're in public and how our prayers are that you know there's different times sometimes they should be long sometimes they should be brief but to consider that a lot of times we think of public prayers as being more brief uh, but then we keep that time to ourselves that when we spend that quiet time alone with God ourselves that is when we can be longer in prayer that is that time of communion that we have with the Lord that you know we can just sit or we can kneel uh, before the Lord and, and just say, you know, here's what's going on in my life. Here's the needs of my church family. Here's the needs of my family. Lord, these are the things that, you know, we would like to see answered uh, that's going on and to spend that time getting to know the Lord by just having that quiet time with him. And the way that we're able to do that is to spend that time with him, just like we sang tonight with sweet hour of prayer. You know, that is, to, that is a prayer that when we're alone with the Lord by ourselves, that we're in our prayer closet talking to him, that is when we spend that time with him. We want to remember that short prayers are not necessarily bad prayers uh, because there's times to do long prayers and times to do short ones. Uh, but some do indeed uh, pray short prayers uh, because of possibly their spiritual dedication. You know, just how, how much do they spend time with the Lord in prayer already. So sometimes people pray prayers because they're not really talking to the Lord any other time, and that's the only time. Sometimes I know uh, people may pray a long time in front of other people because they haven't done that. So we can't really judge somebody's uh, spiritual maturity based on how long or how short that they pray. Uh, but we can tell uh, through the way that they pray, whether they've been spending time with God or not. And that's what we're able to, to be able to hear through those prayers. So the, the one thing to, to remember is that, you know, we want to make sure to spend that time with the Lord, spend the right time that we need to, to, to make sure that we are walking close with him hand in hand. The next thing for us to look at tonight is that he had prayed spontaneously. So here in verse 41, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said. So we can see here that Jesus had prayed spontaneously. It was not something that was necessarily prepared for. It wasn't prepared ahead of time, that when the time came for him to pray, he was ready. He was ready to pray. So he, we could say that he was ready on the spot to say a prayer. And that's the way that we ought to be. And the way that we can do that is by making sure that we're spending that time with the Lord that we need to. And by spending that time with the Lord, it makes it easier to pray on the spot whenever it needs to be done, done spontaneously. Whether we meet a stranger on the street and we start talking to them and the Lord opens up an opportunity to witness to them or talk to them, or maybe it's a brother or sister in Christ that we've never know, have not known and they need encouragement, that that will allow us to open up doors that we can pray with them. So that's why we need to be prayed up and ready. And that way, when we meet those individuals, we can pray right on the spot and say, you know what? Let's pray right now. Let's talk to the Lord about the problem. We'll trust in the Lord that he will take care of this. And it's by being able to spend that time with the Lord in prayer that we'll be ready uh, to be able to pray uh, anytime spontaneously. It's because we've already been in that attitude of prayer because we've already had those habits uh, to pray the way that we'd like to. And those who do that will find it much easier to pray. So the next part here, uh, when we look at this as a whole, is that he had prayed unashamedly. 
So Christ did not hesitate to pray in public. He was able to do that, even though it was a crowd. And we learned from last week that many in this crowd uh, did not believe him, that they doubted who he was. They believed or they were skeptical whether he was really the son of God. And of course, you know, it's not something that, you know, to, to pray in public is not something to show off uh, before somebody else. Uh, we, we don't want to show off in front of other people because that's not why we pray. Uh, we pray because we've been asked to talk to our Heavenly Father, and we need to be able to talk to Him uh, without put, putting thoughts in our mind or other people's thoughts uh, before us actually speaking and talking to Him. So one example of this is to think about, you know, are we praying over our our breakfast and lunch and dinners? And that's one thing to pray in our house. Are we comfortable to do that in front of our family members? But then, you know, another is, you know, what about when we go out to eat? So when we go out to a restaurant, and some of us may not be going out to a lot of restaurants right now. So that, that may not be, be a good example at this moment, but hopefully before too long, we'll be able to eat at restaurants again. And, but, you know, are we comfortable and with praying to the Lord before we eat? Are we able to give that thanksgiving to the Lord uh, before we eat that eat the food and to ask the Lord to you know just to bless the food that He has given to us? Are we able to do that because of a strong faith that God has given to each of us, or we or do we have a fear of being embarrassed and we decide not to pray inside a restaurant because of that? We need to make sure that we are not ashamed of the Lord. And, you know, it hasn't happened often, but, you know, I do remember one time when I was a teenager, I had several friends who were Christians and we would uh, go out to eat. And there was one time that we had prayed and as we, we had prayed over our food. And because of that, there was a, another couple that was nearby or, or an individual that had noticed us do that. And because of that, uh, that person wanted to pay for our meal because uh, they saw some young people out, and he wanted to honor the Lord and encourage us, and that was just a, a blessing at that time for that to happen. Uh, we weren't doing it for show. We weren't doing it for anything except, you know, we wanted to thank the Lord for the food that he had given to us, and God had blessed us. He blessed all of us during that moment in time, and I know it's not the, that's one of the times I remember the most, but I believe it's happened another one or two times in my life uh, that the Lord has done something like that. And you may even have people, you know, come up and say something to you uh, afterwards and say, hey, I noticed you're praying. We appreciate that. You're, you're showing God's love. You're being that example in this dark world uh, by doing that out in public. So are we ashamed or we have a strong faith and say that, yes, we're willing to do that? The next item to look at is that he prayed believingly. So in verse 41, it says, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. So Christ displayed a great faith in his praying of this prayer. He had thanked God for raising Lazarus before he'd even been raised from the dead. He had thanked God in anticipation of what God was going to do. Even though things may look dark and bleak, we can thank the Lord in faith for what he's going to do. So, you know, a lot of times we may, uh, you know, we ask God to answer a prayer, and once he answers the prayer, we continue to go on with life. And, you know, and sometimes we don't end up thanking the Lord for the blessings that he's done in our lives, or that miracle. And we have end up missing that in order to share with other believers. And maybe we've even forgot to thank him for that answered prayer. So part of thanking him before that we're believing that he's going to do it, that, you know, by thanking him ahead of time, we at least get one thank you in before he answers the prayer. It'd be awful to wait till afterwards and not thank God for the blessing that he has given to us. So we need to make sure that we are thanking the Lord for the answered prayers that he's given to us and our families. The next thing is that he had prayed gratefully. And this is in verse 41. There's three short words. It says, I thank thee. You know, gratefulness began this prayer in the cemetery. 
is a good thing for us to begin all of our prayers with gratefulness, that we're able to be grateful for what the Lord has done for us. You know, when the Lord has asked us to do something, you know, we want to make sure that that we are being grateful for the things that we anticipate him doing. Uh, not only just to be thankful, but grateful for those things. You know, if we're not grateful for those, for God and what he's done for us, if we're not grateful for how Jesus died on the cross for us, that, you know, we begin living our, our life in a way that, you know, we start to forget, you know, about what Jesus had done for us, that God will see that we are ungrateful. And becoming ungrateful means we are actually bringing dishonor to God. And none of us want to do that. We want to bring God honor. We want to give him the thanksgiving. We want to give God what he deserves. And we need to be grateful for all that he's done for us so we don't ever dishonor him. The next item is that he had prayed knowingly. So in 41 and 42, it says, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. So the aspect that we hear, see here is that Jesus knew that God always heard him. We need to remember that. You know, there are so many times we pray, you know, we may be going through those deep, dark trials. And, you know, we may wonder, Lord, where are you? Lord, why am I going through this time? How, why are these troubles happening happening to me? But right here, we see a promise that says, And I knew that thou hearest me always. You know, every time that, that we spend time in prayer, God hears us. You know, it doesn't matter if it's one of us praying or many of us praying. Or, you know, there's believers all over the world, and there's got to be prayers going up all at the same time. But even amongst all of those prayers going up to heaven, God hears every one of them. And not just every one of them, but every time. We can take trust and know that God is hearing us. That even though it may feel like we're going through that trouble and that trial alone, that we're going through that storm alone, that we can take assurance through this verse that God hears us always. It doesn't matter, you know, whether we're driving our car or it doesn't matter if we're putting our head down on our pillow at night, or we're working out, out in the, the flower bed or the garden, or we're maybe at work doing what we're supposed to be with, with our workplace. It doesn't matter any of those things, that each time that we pray to God, He hears us, and He hears us every time. You know, what reassurance that is. What, what a confidence we can have that God is hearing us and will answer our prayers, knowing that He hears them every time that we pray. So Christ had prayed knowingly that God would hear them, and we can do the same. We can pray knowing that God will hear us. It's not a if you hear me, God. It's not I hope you hear me, God. It can be I know that you hear me, Lord, and that's why I'm coming before your throne to ask for this help or assistance, or I'm coming before you just to give you praise and thanksgiving for what you've done in our lives that we can do that knowingly. Then the last one is that he prayed beneficially. Because of the, so in verse 42, it says, because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. So Christ was praying to help everybody else around them. He knew that we had the skeptics that were there. He knew that there were people who doubted. And he knew that there was a miracle was about ready to happen. And that miracle was so it would glorify Christ. And so that people would realize that he is the Christ. So whenever he prayed, he ended up doing it out loud. You know, a lot of times we don't pray to be heard, as I've already spoken about. But in this case, he did pray so that others would hear, so that uh, they would understand that there was a greater reason and a greater purpose for what was going on, for what they thought was a storm that, would, that, that was going to continue for a while, and they would have that sorrow deep within their souls. But Christ had prayed in a way to let them know that they could trust him 
as their savior. This was an exception to how we typically pray. You know, sometimes we do pray in a way that, you know, may the Lord has led us to pray to help others. You know, if we have a, a friend who is sick and we pray with them, you know, we may pray in a way that, you know, we're, we're talking to the Lord, but, you know, at the same time, we want to be able to give them encouraging words. And that's a time that we can do that, that we can have our faith, uh, that we can pray knowingly and with thanksgiving to, to pray with those things in mind and to be encouraging to, to our friends that, you know, God is going to hear our prayers. He is going to answer through this storm. He is going to take care of us. We can believe knowing that he will do that. In those cases, it is, you know, it's for us and talking to the Lord. But in those times, it can also be beneficial to our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, it can be beneficial to those who are lost. You know, I've heard stories of um, men and women both who had children who were lost and they would pray and they would pray out loud and they would do it in their bedroom. And I've heard their children have testimonies afterwards and they would remember how their mom and dad had prayed for them and that they would hear them and how it would just prick their heart when they would hear them pray. And it was sometimes it was because of that, that's when they end up getting saved. Other times I would heard uh, these individuals, they would end up saying that they, that they remembered those words that their parents had prayed for them. And it was later in life they remembered those things. And it was at those certain times and circumstances God used to prick their heart and had that quickening of their spirit so it would come alive and they would understand that the Lord loves them. And it's because of those prayers they helped lead them to Christ. So our prayers can be beneficial to others who are around us. It's not because that we want to be uh, raised up on a pedestal. It's not because we want to be uh, people to look at us. But there are times it can be beneficial to help our loved ones end up finding Christ. Just as Jesus had did that here to help the community that was there, the Jewish community there in Bethany, to, to help encourage Mary and Martha who were there, to help encourage the disciples who were there, that God used his prayer to be an encouragement for all of them. So tonight we can remember that God has given us many of these things to think about tonight, that through Christ's prayer and the things that we can learn, we can think about, remember that Jesus wants us to pray continuously, that it's not just a, a one time and we're done. You know, some people will want to, to, to pray uh, based upon their circumstances, that they only pray when things are going wrong. But God wants us to pray in the good times and the bad times. He prayed in a way that was brief in public. Uh, he was able to pray spontaneously in front of other people. He was able to do that with not being ashamed of who God was or who he was. We can learn to do that. He prayed being believing. He was also grateful for what the Lord had done or was going to do just as we can. And he prayed in a way that he knew that God would answer the prayers. And then he prayed in a way that was beneficial to those around him. So those are some things that we can learn tonight to help us grow closer to the Lord to think about our prayer life and how God can use our prayer life and help us to, to get better with our prayers so that, you know, we are ready to pray at any time that he may ask us to.